The caregiver was helping the old man take a bath, but she accidentally caused water to get into her eyes. She took out a mirror to check her eyes, and the old man saw the mirror with a surprised expression on his face. Next, the caregiver put the mirror in front of the old man. What did he really see? Caroline is a caregiver. She decided to leave the hospital because she couldn't stand the hospital's indifferent attitude towards the deceased. Caroline found another full-time job as a caregiver. Her new job is in an old house. Caroline is caring for an elderly man who has had a stroke. He couldn't move or even speak. The doctors say he has less than a month to live. Caroline is referred to Luke, the attorney in charge of the old man's estate. The old man's wife is Mrs. Devereaux. She is very conservative and stubborn. Five caregivers had already quit because they couldn't stand Mrs. Devereaux. She didn't want Caroline to stay here. But Luke said Caroline's resume was really excellent and all the elderly people she's cared for have died peacefully. Caroline noticed something odd about the house the first night she started. There were no mirrors anywhere in the house, and she was suddenly grabbed by the wrist of an old man. While she was working, the old man's eyes blinked as if he had something to say. He doesn't let go until Mrs. Devereaux arrives to deliver the medicine. Caroline was given a key. It was a master key that could open all the rooms. Mrs. Devereaux described the house as a house she had bought from a brother and sister. There was a photo of the siblings on the desk. Caroline picked up the frame and looked at it. Then another photo fell out of the frame. There were two black people behind the brother and sister. But Caroline didn't care who they were. The next day Mrs. Devereaux asked Caroline to go to the attic to get something. She went into the attic but heard a strange noise. Behind the drawer that made the noise was a doorknob, but the door could not be opened with the key. Caroline rushed to tell the strange story, but Mrs. Devereaux didn't care about the door. The door hadn't been opened since she moved here. Caroline recalled what Luke had said. He said the old man had a stroke in the attic. Maybe there's a secret behind this door. In her sleep at night, Caroline heard a noise from upstairs. She rushed upstairs to find the old man, who had suffered a stroke and was paralyzed. Gone, the old man's room was locked. The old man had only one way out, and that was the window. So Caroline opened the window and saw the old man crawling on the roof. He would rather fall from the roof than return to his room. Mrs. Devereaux clearly said that her husband was paralyzed. Now what happens is that Mrs. Devereaux is lying. Caroline found that the old man had written help on the sheet. She hastily hid the sheet. Mrs. Devereaux heard the commotion and came over. They both went to the roof and carried the old man to his room. Instead of lying in bed, the paralyzed old man climbed to the roof of the house. What on earth could have happened to make a paralyzed old man jump out of a window and run for his life? Luke came in the next day to ask about last night. Caroline took out the bed sheets. Last night, the sheets clearly had the old man's handwriting on them asking for help, but now the handwriting had suddenly disappeared. She goes to the attic to find out the secret hidden in the room. She tried every possible way to open the door. The interior of the room was very strange. The shelves were filled with all kinds of bottles and jars. They all seemed to have something to do with witchcraft and curses. Caroline found a photo album with pictures of the previous owner. There was also a picture of a sheltering spell. She then found an odd three-headed snake ring and a vinyl disc with the date of the sacrifice. It seems that some kind of ritual was held in this room. At night Caroline came to town and played the found vinyl, but then a strange incantation plays. Caroline told her best friend what she had seen and heard. She said it must be witchcraft. But if you believe in it, it exists. And if you don't believe in it, it doesn't exist. The next morning, Caroline tells Mrs. Devereaux that she already knows the secret of the attic. If you don't tell me the truth, I'll leave this place. Mrs. Devereaux lit a cigarette and told the story of what had happened in the house. Ninety years ago, there was a rich man and two black servants living here. They looked normal but secretly used witchcraft in private. One night a party was being held in the house, but someone found that the rich man's two children were missing. The children were finally found in the attic. The children were surrounded by candles. A spell was playing in the room. The two servants were having strange convulsions. The children said they were doing this because they wanted to learn witchcraft themselves. But the group then hanged the two black servants and burned them to death. Soon after the rich man went bankrupt. Then he killed himself after killing his wife. Later, Someone saw the ghost of the two servants in the mirror. Since then, no mirrors have appeared here. Caroline deliberately showed the old man the mirror to confirm the existence of the ghosts. The paralyzed old man only took one look at the mirror and his whole body got sick. Caroline thought that the old man must have been possessed. Since the old man was possessed, 
There must be a way to dispel the evil spirits. Caroline found a witch and bought some exorcism props. She placed the props next to the old man and started to exorcise him. Then the old man spoke up, let me out. She looked at the poor and helpless old man and decided to save him from his suffering. At night she secretly gave Mrs. Devereaux a drug. Mrs. Devereaux drank it and became dizzy. With her remaining consciousness, she took out chalk and a piece of yellow paper and began to recite a spell. Caroline hurriedly interrupted the spell. She realized it was an asylum spell. She immediately drove the old man and prepared to leave. But a door with chains stopped them both. The car couldn't hit the door. By now Mrs. Devereaux had awakened. She picked up a shotgun and walked slowly. Caroline put the old man in the warehouse. Then she rode a small boat and ran for help. She flees to town to get help from her lawyer Luke. In the perceptive Caroline finds a lot of pictures of her life on his desk. In his drawer is a broken master key and a three-headed snake ring. Before she can react, Luke knocks her out when Caroline wakes up again. She and the old man are back inside the old house. Only then did Caroline realize that the real sacrifice was not the old man, but herself. Mrs. Devereaux continues to look for the old man in the backyard. She told Luke to keep an eye on Caroline with a gun. Caroline took the opportunity to run to the attic. But what happened inside the attic shocked her. A spell was set up in the attic with many candles and mirrors. Caroline suddenly remembered the witchcraft Mrs. Devereaux used to protect her. So she prepared to use the spell to protect herself too. She drew the spell according to the drawing. Then she used her own hair and blood to start the exorcism. That's when Mrs. Devereaux suddenly appeared. She had an eerie smile on her face. She told Caroline that we've been waiting for this moment, waiting for you to believe in this. If the person doesn't believe, then the witchcraft will work. After she said that, the real witchcraft started. It wasn't long before Caroline woke up from her coma. She had never smoked before and quietly walked to Mrs. Devereaux's side but she picked up the cigarette on the floor and lit it with great skill. Luke came up to her and said, How are you feeling, dear? Caroline replied, It's good to be young. And the old man and the old woman and the ambulance looked at each other. They are the real lawyers. Luke and Caroline, they both know the truth but can speak again. 